Hello, everybody. Hey, Grant. Hey, Jordan. Hey, audience. Whoever's watching, if you're watching, hey. I appreciate the fact that you uh, decided to stop by and watch our videos. Um, now that I've gotten the groveling and the butt kissing out of the way, let's get into the meat of what I wanted to talk about. And by meat, I mean it literally. Because today we're going to be talking about horse meat. And specifically the scandals that are involved in Europe. Which are everywhere! So I've actually been keeping up with this whole horse meat thing that's been going on in Europe for a while now. Since uh, the first article about it came three weeks ago on, the B on BBC News. About how uh, frozen dinners in France had traces of horse meat in them that came from uh, place, uh, meat packers in Romania. And now that now they've found horse meat in the meatballs at IKEA. Now don't worry, we have our own separate uh, meat producers here for IKEA in the United States and Canada, so our our meat isn't uh, affected by this whole thing that's going on in Europe. Interestingly enough, uh, <laughs> horse meat isn't really a new thing in, in Europe or actually really anywhere. Uh, for a very long time in in uh, human history, uh, horse meat has actually been a semi regular part of our diet, especially in Europe. Uh, although in Roman times, they w horses were revered, and so they weren't really eaten; they were just sacrificed to the goddess opponent. Although Germanic tribes did re both revere and uh, dine upon their horses. Though I'm pretty sure that they had specific horses for that. They didn't ride out into the town with their war horses and start pillaging people and then they'd have a nice feast with them afterwards. How would you be able to get home after that? But this whole scandal kind of opens up a couple of questions like, why do we care if we eat horse meat? There's kind of like two parts to why we feel the way we do about horses and why we're kind of adverse to, uh, to eating it. Well, I guess three parts because, you know. Holy Roman Empire, which was neither holy nor Roman nor empirical, but, you know, that's a topic for a different day. The first kind of pseudo-idea is that horses are pets in our minds. Uh, we treat them as kind of social-emotional equals in a way that we treat dogs and cats. That's not to say that, you know, in certain places in the world they, you know, eat dogs and cats, because regular part of the diet, if you don't have anything left to eat, you gotta eat something, and you're gonna end up eating your dog and your cat or your horse. Most, hopefully not your horse, because that, because uh, they're work, they're work animals. And it kind of ties into the second point that I'm getting into, is that, uh, horses are work animals. They have a purpose beyond just being food. Uh, you don't want to eat your work animal, because how else are you gonna plow the field? It's just like how you don't turn a milk cow or a dairy cow into your birthing cow into your, your burger cow. Uh, you got steer for that, and so you have a specific purpose for everything that goes on. When something becomes culturally ingrained in society, it becomes like, uh, like a sin to not do it. And so when we talk about eating horses, it's like, oh my gosh, there are pets. Why in the world would you want to eat your pet? You get this public disgust associated with with eating our equine friends. Equestrians don't really know how to treat horses right, but in a lot of, a lot of movies, you see you know, horses aren't particularly treated the best. I mean, they're treated like companions, and they actually do have real feelings, and they form real tight emotional bonds with the people that they care about, and if you do mean things to them, they're not going to be friendly to you, and they can be hurt, and they can be scarred, just like any other animal that we would normally consider a pet, and that's probably why we get this whole thing about having them pets. And even more than pets, a lot of cultures consider horses equals to human beings because they serve such a great purpose in their society, their fuel, their transportation. And so it just all ties into the whole idea that you don't eat horses. But in the end, uh, it doesn't really matter. Uh, horses, horse meat has been described as an excellent substitute for beef, even better than venison. It's not as gamey as venison. I guess in the end, though, I don't particularly care. I mean, I've grown up in this society where, you know, it's not particularly smiled upon to partake of of our fine equine friends, even into the 20th century. Actually, Britain has, you know, sold horse meat and incorporated it into their meals and most places of the world still eat horse meat now, so, I mean, just, I guess it just depends on where you live. And that happens to be a perspective from the viewpoint of Eric Allred. I'll see you guys later. I think, Grant, you're changing with Jordan, so I'll see you, Grant, on Monday, and I'll see you, Jordan, on Wednesday, and you will see me again on Friday. Stay fantastic.